YouTube. It's your boy Rich Minds Everything. Today's video, we're gonna be installing the AC compressor in the bracket. We're gonna be trying to. I mean, well, it's gonna be a success because it's me. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna be using this is like how to use the stock bracket. I mean, I could have bought the bracket for this, the ICT bracket for this, but I'm gonna be more conservative on money. So, uh, I'm gonna use the stock bracket. I got this bracket out of 94 Chevy Tahoe. And I got the air compressor out of it too, uh, from my local junkyard. Uh, it's an R4 compressor. For some odd reason, I was trying to figure out why does this one has three lines, but then I was thinking maybe because it has, you know, back seat heating and arrows. I don't know. But let me talk about that right now. Uh I'm gonna be using utilizing this uh stock bracket for my LS swap instead of buying the expensive two hundred dollar bracket and yada yada yada. Because most people don't see that bracket, and they be like, "Yeah, I'm not doing that." Um, I could have used my stock AC location down there. I have plenty of room, but I don't want it down there to be honest, because it was gonna. Now, I mean, my AC compressor it fits, but the problem I kept running into. It's trying to figure out my lines. My lines wasn't going. My lines kept was you know was just hitting everything. It's like a mess over here. But that's because that's from my old AC, uh, from my um, from the original motor that was in here, the original five oh two, or the 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 original three oh two that was in here that I took out and put this in here, this LS up in here. So uh, so I'm finna get this installed the way you do it. You gotta cut. I, I, well, I got a form that I'm posting the links, but uh, in the forms, it said cut this part right here off, mount it up, take your stock tensioner off, then you're going to, this one comes with a tensioner, so I don't need to take this off. You leave that on there, just cut this piece off. So, uh, that's my R4 compressor, I'm going to get this installed, and I'll be right back to it. I'm going to record as much as I can, like I do in every other video, so... Yep, and I'm going to go over everything, too. So, no no need to panic. So. All right, so I got the tension off. As you've seen, three boats holding the tension in. All of them are 15 millimeter boats. Uh, now I'm going to move on to cut this tail off on this... Uh, AC bracket that I got from the junkyard. So uh, I was thinking about cleaning this off, painting it when I'm done to make it look nice, you know, color match. Oh, look at that gold. But uh, color match it. Um, so yeah, like I said, I'm gonna get this started. I'm cutting this off and I'm gonna come right back to you. Y'all, I had to make a quick part run because my cutoff wheel busted the sheds, even though it was on his last leg anyway. You know, I used it to the last. So, got me some new parts and I'm gonna give it right back to grind. <laughs> All right, so I got the tail cut off. Do not underestimate aluminum at all. Just a heads up. Uh, after I went to the store and got me some new blades some uh, saw blades and, you know, uh, cut off wheels. Uh, as you can tell, I was cutting too high at first. That's when I realized, I was like, yeah, I'll smooth that out later. Uh, as you can tell right here, I was cutting it too high and I was like, no, it kind of confused, it kind of threw me off the way I was cutting it. But then I started going back to where I need to, needed to cut it at. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna freshen this up, I'm gonna cut it cut this off through this little line then i'm gonna st slowly grind it down i'm gonna grind it down right here so it'll form in looks like it belongs so i'm gonna get this hood popped and i'm gonna see how that's gonna look go on here well we all know what that was <laughs> this is laying on the ground flat <laughs> all right so got this up it's gonna be hard for me to do this with one hand, but I'm gonna try. Well, I see now that I'm gonna have to reroute some wires. Well, no, yeah, 
So, oh, let's see, can I get this in here? Uh, where can I sit y'all at? Sit y'all down over here. Y'all ain't gonna be able to see nothing because I don't have nowhere else to hold it, but you know. If I make a breakthrough, trust me, I'm gonna show you. Obviously, see. All right, so. All right, so. Well, I just found out just by putting this on here, this is gonna have to be rotated. This uh, radiator hose. I'm gonna show y'all how to do that. Uh, cause pimping ain't easy. <laughs> but uh, I'm gonna take this off. Uh, cause I'm I'm not gonna take it off right now. I'm gonna get when I get to the part. I'm gonna get to it. So. What you're gonna do is, I'm, well, I'm gonna take this uh, wheel off and I'm gonna test feed it back on there. I'm just gonna roll my whole toolbox out here. I'm gonna have to check this off. All right, y'all, so on this one, like your setup might not be like my setup because I'm pretty sure most of y'all don't have to cut a notch in your hood for the alternator. I had to because my hood sits low. Uh, unfortunately, I had to do the same thing for this as well i had to cut a notch in the hood so it can clear it can shut and it shuts perfectly i'm gonna show y'all how that looks because i had to I test fit it at first and i was like man my hood was like just like this and it wouldn't go down anymore i'm like man what's going on so i cut that little slack off but as you can see my hood closes lays perfectly flat so uh, I got that situated. I'm gonna clean up them edges that I cut out. Oh my God. Uh, oh, something about these floors and pulling on these uh, hood latches, man. But uh, yeah, I had to cut that notch out. Uh, I have it bolted in. I have it bolted in. I have that one bolt in there. Uh, you, you won't, also another thing. You gonna need something to stick in there. You probably can use a washer. Well, I'm going to use washers, but you can also use a nut to go in there. A nut that's bigger than that, and then it'll slide up in there and, you know, give you that correct amount of space that you need. But me, I'm going to use washers because I have nothing but washers. Uh, and I'm going to show y'all a trick to, you know, make sure this is sturdy because obviously that one bolt right there is not going to work. So I'm going to show y'all. I'm going to show y'all a little trick, a little tricky trick. And as you can tell, this boat is um uh, hidden well it's not this boat but this uh this potential pulley is hidden my water pump uh thingy so i did some research on youtube some people they just take their uh jack they uh jack handle stick it up in this hole and they turn it but first you got to heat this area up that way you can do it uh yeah you just heat this area up and you can move it, move it out the way and just have it coming this way, whatnot. I think that'll be better for me because I can get my holes better the way I actually want it to instead of having it going on top. So my holes will come like this. Yeah, my holes will come like that, but I'm show y'all how they did, how, how that's gonna turn out. Hopefully it's smooth sailing from here and now on, hopefully. So uh, let me get this situated. And I'll be right back right, with y'all. See, I got the hole cl more cleaned up now. It ain't perfect. Uh, but I'm going to figure out some type of... I'm going to figure out something to, you know, cover up them rough edges. I'm going to figure out something. I, I'm a, I might end up welding. You know, I got a... I don't know. Nah, this metal. I don't know. I'm going to figure out something, but it's clean in front right now. Uh, I might just cover it up with something. I don't know cover it up with something have it covered and then cut the hole out forward the cover don't put on there but as you can tell um i went on ahead and mounted the air compressor on there i just took the tension to pull it back off this is the stock this is the stock belt that kinds with that count they came with the uh you know the original setup but i just put this belt on here just to show y'all how everything lines back up perfectly it ain't off or nothing so it's on there perfectly uh now 
I gotta go give me a belt size. Uh, I'm gonna go give me a belt. That's uh, gonna be the correct size for my uh, setup. I don't know. Hold on, give me a second, y'all. I think I need, I need, it's like an inch, an inch short. So, yeah, it's like an inch. I'm gonna get a belt that's two inches bigger than this one. So, I'm finna uh, finish doing this uh, AC bracket, but let me go ahead and go. Going to further detail before I get distracted. All right, y'all. Today is day number two, and I just got through welding this in right here. My bracket, my yeah, my uh, custom support bracket that I'm gonna have go to the bottom of my air compressor uh, mount housing. So that's gonna be my second support housing. Saying you won't be able to use this screw right here. You going I'm a. Uh, I'm a. Uh, you I made a custom support. I just got this break from the junkyard, cut it down and wed it together, man. It ain't ain't a big biggie. So let me see. Oop, I'm dropping stuff. Alright, so I'll put this boat in here so y'all can see. I'm looking through the camera, y'all, so <laughs> hold on. Yeah take the boat out a little bit so I can set this flat up on here. All right. All right. So I get that in there. That lines up perfectly with my header boat because I measured, you know. So that's going to boat down like that. And I made a custom support bracket to hold the rest of the alternator up so it won't be doing a lot of moving. So I'm going to get this boated down. This screw is not sticking out. I just got to push it in like so. But this is my custom bracket that I was telling y'all about. I just got this piece from the junkyard, cut it down, weld it, yada, yada, yada. So make a custom support. You can do this with anything, man, just as long as you got the imagination. <laughs> so I'm finna go ahead and get this uh, boat down there. I'm going to take this header boat out, get this set in, and, you know, test it. See if, see if the alternator going to, I mean, I thought the see if the AC compressor going to move. So. Wish me luck. So I got it mounted up, bolted in to the um, header, to the back of the uh, the bracket. Air compressor is mounted up. It's not going anywhere. That's the tension of making noise. But if I pull on an actual bracket, this thing is not going over there. Look at that, rocking the car. So uh, it works. It sits in perfectly, just how I want it. So um, now I have to get a belt fitted figure out the belt size I need and get this plumbed in, get some fittings made for the back of the AC compressor, get some Freon. I don't know if I need oil, but I'm gonna just get some, some oil for it too. Uh, get some oil for it. So this goes on here, yada, yada, yada. So, I'm gonna figure all this out though. Uh, but yeah, I showed y'all it's mounted up, mounted in. I gotta do the wiring for it and figure out what's gonna be next for it. But this is the bracket. Like I said, I got it out of 94, 94 Chevy 1500 Suburban, 1994. I think you get out of 95 too. You gonna cut the tail end off. If you missed that part, it's back. It's, you know, if you skip through the video or whatnot, it's, it's back in the uh, previous part when I cut the tail off of it. Um, but yeah, simple. Beats paying nine hundred dollars. I mean, not nine hundred dollars, a hundred and ninety nine dollars or two hundred and eighty something dollars. It's beats that. I mean, it's not a billet, but it's work for under the budget. You're gonna have AC in your car. It just ain't gonna look fancy up under the hood but who cares you got air and some cars don't have air so this bracket is gonna work for me and i'm finna get started i might start out doing the injector wiring today but i'm focused on this ac so i'm finna take care of this get this uh situated you know i'm finna take care of this get this situated uh my ac plumbing my belt size so i'm gonna have to make a quick trip to the parts store 
and see what I need. I'm pretty sure my belt is, has to be two inches long because it's like it's like an inch short. So yeah, my belt is like an inch short. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna see what I can what I can do about that. And yeah, I think that'll be it. Yep, that'll be it right there. So I'm gonna figure this out and we'll be right back with y'all. So I got the ordinate turn. Uh, the way you turn this, uh, I apply heat to it, and I also used, uh, let me see. I also used my pry bar right here, and I think just using the pry bar without all the heat on there works better because what you do, you're gonna get your, you're gonna try and get up under this groove right here. It has a look. This little nipple looking looking groove right here. You're gonna get your uh, pry bar up under there and you're just gonna tap around until it starts raising up. Then you're just gonna take a hammer and bang on the side of the water neck. And that's gonna slowly turn that water neck the uh the uh correct way. And I was gonna you know pull it up and yada yada, but I decided not to. Uh I don't know if it's gonna leak or not, but when I get everything hooked up and get it to operating temperature, I'm gonna see is that uh is it gonna leak or whatnot. But if it does, I do have some RTV, RTV, RTB, whatever it's called. I do got some uh, gassy glue maker that I'm gonna put on there. To, uh, if it start leaking, ain't, ain't ain't a big deal. Yada yada yada. You gotta you got you have to turn this neck if you gonna use the stock break. You are gonna have to turn this neck. And here go my cooling hose this is the stock uh forward radiator i don't know how the uh chevy radiator looks but i know it's bigger than this so i, I kept the stock radiator in here uh using the stock hoses it clears right here but if i let it go it's just barely touching it so i'm gonna use something i'm gonna use something to keep this hose up out here or i might just turn his neck a little bit more i don't want to turn it too much i don't want to turn it too much but uh yeah so got the hose turned everything fits perfectly the hood closes nothing is really rubbing <laughs> major majorly yet uh like i said i gotta do that besides the small the small minor adjustments that i said um uh, i still gotta do wiring i still gotta run to the parts store and get a bigger belt and what else i gotta do while well, i'm at the parts store I might as well buy oil too. But uh yeah, besides all that, it's in there. The bracket is finally in here. Uh, I took the I took everything apart, so that's why they both hanging out like that. But it's not going anywhere. Like this is solid. This is solid. And another thing, when you go to the junkyard and get you parts, when you get this bracket or whatnot, be sure to Get you some alternator bolts, some power steering pump bolts, uh, just because it's easier. It's it's better to have more than less because the stock bolts that goes to the bracket, it'll, you'll cross thread your uh, you'll cross thread your uh, block. So what bolt I got in here right now is an alternator bolt. So both of these are alternator bolts because I put an alternator bolt right here because the stock bolt wasn't long enough to thread onto a nut so i just uh replaced it and i use alternator bolts on both sides uh well accessory bolts let's get you a bunch of accessory bolts from the junkyard man but uh i don't use the stock bolts to you know thread in your block because it'll cross thread it found that out the hard way but luckily i, I got a tap and die kit so i just uh i put that in there so we're good on that uh what else should i go over i gotta get the lines made i'm gonna take this back off because i'm gonna see do it have oil in it I, I think it should i don't know you probably can hear it when i turn the yeah i don't know i think it's probably just best if i get new oil but as you can tell by the sound it's, it's pumping pretty good um yeah, so I'm going to get that situated, run to this parts store, get the parts that I need, and I'm going to come back and continue this uh All right, video. so I just made two runs to the parts store. The first belt I got wasn't the right size. Uh, I'm going to put a link in the description on uh, what size belt 
you gonna need, but you also gonna can screenshot. You are gonna need a K06, 0935 belt. It's a 94 inches. Um, at first I had, I, at first I had got a um three quarters, uh, 94 inches, three quarters. It was too big. It was like it was just had too much play in it. So I decided to do it this route, and this belt it shouldn't squeak. This is a Gates belt. The belt I had before this wasn't a Gates. Uh, this belt was just a dollar more, so I just paid a dollar more for it. And I guess Gates is more heavy duty. I, I never seen a belt that got crystals in it. I don't know if y'all can see that crystal flakes, whatever you want to call that glitter. <laughs> but uh, it was just a dollar more, so I went on ahead and got the Gates belt. But as you can tell, I got this whole system on here. Everything lined up perfectly, like I said it was. Uh, the belt. Everything lined up. Tensioner, uh, my radiator hose. I turned, like I said, I turned that neck, that water neck right there. Now what I gotta do, I gotta wire it up, um, pull this air compress back off, dump the old oil out, and uh, put the new oil in. Put the new oil in and uh, finish winding up my condenser side forward, my hot, hot side, whatever you wanna call it. But uh, besides that, that's mainly everything. Uh, I gotta get free on to test the clutch out so it can have pressure on it. So I got a long way to go. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to test this out. I want to finish up my wine, and that'll be it. I said, I hope we're gonna continue with the video. <laughs> See, it's running. <laughs> See, it's running. So you know, I ain't full job. Uh, I probably put it in the next video. I'ma uh, start the wiring process on this. If I don't start on it today, uh, I got to get holes made to the back of this, and I got a lot to do. So that's that. Both. It cost to be a boss, I woke up feeling like a boss Yeah, yeah